It's you. You are the only one that's stopping you. No one else can stop you but you. And we have to break out of that lid and we just have to renew our mind and we have to tell our flesh who is in charge and we have to tell our surroundings and the devil that we're diligent that we we are men and women after god's own heart that we are going to accomplish everything that god has called us to do My channel I am so excited to be filming this video if you guys are new here my name is Vivian I like to make faith related videos lifestyle videos and videos like this before I get started I just want to share with you guys I am NOT perfect I am nowhere near perfect I have not arrived but I am sharing it because I do struggle with it and it is something I am constantly battling is the fight between my flesh and the fight between my spirit of wanting to do more but being held back by the flesh wanting to just be on social media wanting to not work hard like trust me if you guys feel that way i'm not here to condemn you or shame you in any way i am here to help you and i'm here to share scriptures with you guys that help me and i'm going to share with you guys how i get these scriptures and i apply them to my life and i make them personal and i confess them out of my mouth so i change because the only thing that will change us is the word of god but just reading the word of God isn't going to change you. You have to apply it to your life. You have to believe it. You have to have faith that you're going to change. So let's get right into it. Confessions to be diligent. So these are just some things that I am determined that I am going to look in the mirror. I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to say, I am a diligent woman of God. I work hard. I am sharp and I am smart. And I want those words to come out of my mouth and I want to look at myself because you really need to change the way you think about yourself. If you think to yourself, if you say this about yourself, oh, I'm just too lazy. Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, I'm just too tired all the time. I'm not a morning person. Oh, I don't like to go to the gym. Oh, I don't like to work too hard. Like if you're saying that stuff and you're saying that about yourself, guess what? You believe it. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So everything that you say about yourself, you believe it. And the more you say it, the more you believe it. So if you're constantly saying, I'm not a morning person, I'm not a morning person, I'm not a morning person, guess what? You're not going to be a morning person. And it bothers me so much that the world sometimes understands this better than Christians. Like, they get it. They get it. They understand it. Like, if I think a certain way, my life's going to change. And for Christians, it's like so hard to understand. But as a man thinks, he becomes. That is a biblical. What the world does, that whole manifestation, law of attraction thing, that is literally, that's a phony of the Bible. It's phony. It's not real. Like, we have the real deal here, okay? Like, as a man thinks, he becomes. The power of life and death are on the tongue. It's in the Bible. So we have to just really get fired up and... First of all, stop being super spiritual. You can't confess what you're going to have because that's law of attraction. First of all, law of attraction is copying the Bible. Like, we are not copying them. The word was formed before the whole world, okay? God is the word. So before you guys start getting all spiritual on me, like, read the Bible. Look at the scriptures. As a man thinks, he becomes. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The power and life and death are on the tongue. Like, it's all in there. Like, you're going to have what you say, okay? So, if you're saying things about yourself that are opposite of being diligent, you are not going to be diligent. If you're saying things about yourself like, I'm just too lazy, like this coffee right here, sleeps 14 hours a day, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be like coffee, sleeping 14 hours a day. So, it's time that you change your thinking. You have to renew your mind because we work hard. Jesus worked hard when he was here. He worked hard. So we have to work hard. Okay, Proverbs 13, 4. Lazy people want, but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Here is something that I'm going to start saying about myself. I am not lazy. I work hard, so I will prosper. Just because you're a Christian and because you follow God and because you love him with all your heart, 
if you're not working hard, like you're gonna see no fruit in your life. You're not gonna prosper in anything that you do. And I'm not talking about just finances. I'm talking about your spiritual life. I'm talking about your word life. I'm talking about your knowledge and the things of God, your wisdom. If you're not working hard to get better, it's not gonna grow. And we have to tell ourselves like, okay, I am diligent. I work hard, so I will prosper in everything that I do. Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. I do not get tired of doing good. At the right time, I will reap a harvest of blessing. I will not give up. You can even make it more personal and put your name on it. Vivian does not get tired of doing good. At the right time, Vivian will reap a harvest of blessing. Vivian will not give up. You have to make it personal. You got to tell your brain. You got to tell your flesh. You got to speak and in that direction, your life's going to go. Speak to your flesh. Speak to your spirit. Speak to your mind, will, emotion, to your soul. Like you got to speak to it. When you're backing things up with the word of God, you're not making things up. Like you're speaking the word of God. Proverbs 12, 24. Hands that work hard will rule, but people who don't want to work will become slaves. I am a hard worker. My hands that work hard will rule. If I do not work hard, I will become a slave. Are you going to work hard and get in the word and renew your mind? Or are you going to become a slave to the world and just follow the trends of the world and do what everyone else is doing? Follow the world instead of following God because you're not willing to put in the work to renew your mind. Proverbs 21.5 the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Hasty means that you're in a hurry. And like I said, guys, I am not perfect. Sometimes I leave my house five minutes before I have to be somewhere, which is literally not good. I'm in a hurry. My mind's scrambled. Like, I'll probably forget something that I really need to have with me when I'm leaving. So being in a hurry is not a good thing. Everything that I'm telling you guys and that I'm going to be telling myself, it's coming from scripture. And here's one, one of the confessions. My plans will surely lead to abundance because I am diligent. I am never in a hurry because that leads to poverty. And the more I tell myself this, I already know. Like, I'm going to be one day in a hurry. And I'll be like, look, if I would have planned earlier, this would not be my case right now. And I, I'm going to be able to catch it and be like, this is poverty. This is not how God wants me to live. I don't need to be in a hurry. I am organized and I plan out my days. It's so important that we are organized and we plan out our days because if you don't like it and if you want to be diligent and you want to use your time wisely because I know right now the thing is like social media, getting stuck on your phone, getting stuck scrolling, like trust me, if anyone knows about that, it's me. I work from home, so it's very easy for me to get caught up doing that. And um, if I don't plan out my day, if I don't plan out like these, this is what I'm posting today, this is what I'm filming today, this is what I'm doing this week, this is what I'm doing next week, if I don't do that, I'm just kind of just going with the flow, like wherever the day leads me, whatever I feel like doing. I'm really going to work hard on being on time and just not being in a hurry. That's something I really do struggle with. And if you struggle with that, like this is a scripture that's going to help you and a confession that's going to help you. I am organized and plan out my days. My plans will surely lead to abundance because I am diligent. I am never in a hurry because that leads to poverty. So that scripture is really going to help. And that scripture is really going to help me. And right now I'm just letting it download and just soak it in because I don't want any, I don't want poverty in my life. I don't want that in my life. I don't want to be in a hurry because that's poverty. So just really, really taking it in and making it personal. Proverbs 10, 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. This goes hand in hand with this last scripture. With this last scripture. I am diligent in everything that I do. I do not have a slack hand that leads to poverty. My hand is diligent and that makes me rich. Rich in every area. And when I say rich, I'm not talking just finances i'm talking spiritually i'm talking physically like i'm talking like every area of your life it makes you rich in every area of your life because if you use your time wisely you'll spend time with god you'll take care of yourself you'll go to the gym you'll clean up your house you'll take care of your children you'll you'll take care of your husband you'll take care of whatever you need to take care of you'll pour into people and it's so important that we're organized proverbs 6 6 through 11 Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, 
no overseer or ruler, yet it stores yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there? You sluggard, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. If there's any scripture that really hits me, it's this one. Like a punch to my face. God's really here saying, look at an, look, look at an ant. One of the most irritating animals, smallest animals. No ruler, no overseer, but it still gets its work done. You gotta get it together. These ants are out here doing their work and we're over here being lazy. It's crazy to me. This scripture blows my mind every single time I read it. But something I am going to be telling myself every single morning, I am like an ant. Even with no ruler or overseer, I get my work done. I do not like to sleep in. I rise up early and look forward to accomplish every task God has given me. When you guys work from home, this is like perfect. You have no ruler, no overseer. Are you putting in work or are you just chilling? Are you making use of all your time or are you just chilling? And this brings me to another, another scripture, Colossians 3.23. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So if you work for someone, you like you represent God. You're you're an ambassador of Christ. Like you are representing God. You are probably the closest thing in the workplace that people have to Jesus. So everything that you do, you have to do it unto God and not unto man. And here's a confession that I got from here. I work willingly at whatever I do. I do it unto God and not unto man. And that's everything. That's with my social media. That's when I serve at the church. That's when my husband asks me to help him with his work. Like I do everything unto God and not unto man. Philippians 3.13 Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Here's the confession. I am like Paul. Never do I believe I have arrived. I am always learning and growing. I forget what is behind me. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which is God through Christ Jesus. Proverbs 14, 23. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. I am a woman of my word. I do what I say and work hard while doing it. You don't want to be someone who just talks and doesn't do. You don't want to be someone who just says, I'm going to do this and this and doesn't do it. And I for sure have fallen into this. I'm on social media. I tell you guys like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. And if I don't accomplish it, I'm like, wow, I was just talking out of air because I didn't just, I didn't even do it. So you want to be a woman of your word if you say you're going to do something or a man of your word. Sorry, guys. Uh, I know guys watch this as well, but you just want to be a woman and a man of your word and you want to work hard at whatever goal God has put in your heart. Work hard. And when you talk about doing something, like make sure you're really going to do it. Proverbs 12, 27. Lazy people don't even cook the game they catch, but the diligent make use of everything they find. Here's the confession. Everything God has given me and called me to do, I am diligent to accomplish it and make it useful for the kingdom. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10. I'm going to read you guys the way I put this scripture to make it personal to myself. So when I say it every morning, I'm speaking to myself, I'm speaking to my spirit, I'm speaking to my flesh. This is what we're going to do. This is the way that we're going. Let's go. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10. I make every effort to respond to God's promises. I supplement, I supplement my faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patience, with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more productive and useful I will be in my knowledge of my Lord Jesus Christ. But if I fail to develop in this way, I am short-sighted or blind. 
forgetting that I have been cleansed from my old sins. So Vivian, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these, do these things and you will never fall away. Sheesh. Whew, that one is so good. I totally recommend for you guys to make this personal and even that last part. Like, so work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Like, this is the key right here, you know? And the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture right here, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10, all of you guys should take that, make it personal, confess it every day, and let it become a revelation, and let it let it just grow in your heart, let it soak in, and this is how you're going to be productive and useful for God, and this is how you'll become more diligent, and this is how you'll never fall away. It's a great scripture. 2 Peter three fourteen. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. So the confession for this one is, I am diligent to be found by God without spot or blemish and at peace. And that's a really good one for just making sure you get in prayer every day. Because you have to be found without spot, spot or blemish and at peace. Number one, that means you got to go in your prayer tent or your prayer closet. Or you just got to go with God. Because we aren't perfect, you know? We are going to mess up. We are going to make mistakes. We're going to fall short of the glory of God. We're not perfect. So to be diligent to be found by God without spot or blemish, that means that we have had to have gone to God and say, Lord, I repent for gossiping. Lord, I repent for giving attitude. Lord, I repent for being rebellious. Lord, I repent for being prideful. Lord, I repent for talking to my husband this way. Lord, I repent for not doing this. Lord, I repent. Whatever the case may be, you went into prayer, you repented, and guess what? God says that I am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will remember them no more. So that's how you are without spot or blemish and at peace. How are you at peace? You go into God's presence. You you let him speak to you, you spend time with him, and that is how you get the peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace I leave with you, peace I give you, I do not give to you as this world gives to you. Peace that surpasses our, our understanding is from heaven. You cannot get that anywhere in the world. Nobody in the world has that, but we can get it from God. So to be diligent, to be found by God without spot or blemish and at peace. We gotta be praying, we gotta be in his presence, we have to let him deal with us and we have to repent every time we mess up and you're gonna mess up, you're not gonna be perfect, I'm not perfect, but you gotta be aware of that too. Like just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect. And since you're not gonna be perfect, you have to make sure that you're in constant communication with God so he can correct you and help you and you're humble enough to go into his presence and repent so yeah you're not going to be perfect just if you think that's going to be you you're not and i used to think that was going to be me <laughs> and man did i get humbled real bad but proverbs 10 22 last scripture the blessing of the lord it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. I don't know why I have the King James Version. But basically the blessing of a, the blessing of God makes someone rich and it adds no sorrow. The blessing of God makes me rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So just telling myself every day, if I'm feeling sorrow, if I'm feeling some type of way, like when I'm doing something, I need to pray, number one. And I need to make sure that my life is simple and I'm not adding too much stuff and I'm only doing what God is telling me to do. You want to make sure that when you make decisions, when you take on a job, a new job, or you take on a responsibility, you need to make sure that God is calling you and telling you to do that because if we take on too much, there's only so much we can handle. So we want to make sure that everything that we're doing is something that God has called us to do. And making sure that we're not wearing ourselves out, that we're not doing too much. Just make your life simple, be diligent, do whatever God is calling you to do, 
and you're gonna prosper and God's gonna bless you so guys those are all the scriptures that I have I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video I love talking about this subject and I I love talking about diligence and not being lazy because I really get fired up when I talk about it because God has so much for all of us. And the only one that is stopping us is not the devil, it's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your enemy or whatever. Like, it's not the demon. It's you. You are the only one that's stopping you. No one else can stop you but you. And we have to break out of that lid and we just have to renew our mind and we have to tell our flesh who is in charge and we have to tell our surroundings and the devil that we're diligent that we we are men and women after god's own heart that we are going to accomplish everything that god has called us to do i love you guys so much thank you so much for supporting this channel make sure you guys like comment and subscribe and if you guys have any video requests let me know i will be vlogging so keep a lookout for a vlog and there will be another sit down video so i'll see you guys very soon love you all so much and remember to work hard Get up and pray, rise up early, and get your stuff done. Love you guys. Bye.